Good morning and welcome to church. You are welcome to the third service today at the Covenant Nation. This morning we are beaming live from our center called the Lekki Chapel, somewhere behind the Anyo filling station along the Lekki Expressway, where um, it used to be called the fourth roundabout. We are so glad you could join us from anywhere in the world that you are joining us this morning. We are happy that you are able to make it. We appreciate your online audience. Glad you could make it. Um, I'm sure you've been following Pastor's uh, series on revival in the church, in the local assembly, actually. And today is going to dig down deeply to take on a specific topic that speaks to the art and practice of believing prayer. So, is there an art to praying and getting your prayers answered such that power is released into the hearts and into the consciousness of those under the anointing of such prayers? I believe there is because if you are, you are lucky like me to have listened to the first service, then you know there is an answer to that. I want to urge you to pay attention as um, you also get ready to listen to that same uh, uh, sermon and get the wisdom nuggets that is going to release to us so that we know how to pray effectively believing even before uh, we see the manifestation that our prayers are answered and that is the essence of today's topic if you are if you are around please you can start getting ready now to come to church right now uh, bible study is already going on and the, the service proper will soon start or if perchance you are not in lagos or in the lekki area we have like you know now 16 centers all across Nigeria, 12 of them here in Lagos, both mainland and on the island. And then we have in the city of Ibadan, two centers, one in the Samonda area, the other one in the Ring Road area. And then in Abuja, two centers also. So if you're in any of these cities, we want to uh, welcome you into the physical church location there. And even as you come, remember to tell your friends that are in that city, uh, and you might not be there, tell them to also find the center that is closest to them and join us in, in uh, physical services. But if you are not able to make it, then please continue to be part of our online uh, family and we'll be glad to continue to receive you. Thank you now as we lead you into the main auditorium for the beginning of the service with praise and worship. Once again, we love you. We are grateful you could join us and we look forward to seeing you here once again during the next service. God bless you. Since you rise and find us rare, I will sow with you a precious star. Father, you are king over the love. I will be still and know you are God. Towards heaven and just say, I will be still in your presence. You are God over every flock. You are God over every way. Hey. It's time to rest my soul. It's time to rest my soul. In Christ alone, in Christ alone.
keeper, you are my shelter, my sustainer, my
rejoice. If you know you serve a mind to God, come and lift up your hands and pray the Holy Ghost. You are mighty. 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 You are migh
are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. Your body like you. You are mighty. Your power like you. You are mighty. Your God like you. You are mighty. Somebody celebrate God Almighty. Somebody release a sound in the spirit. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Thank you, you are mighty. 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 The greater you are. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. Come on, come on! Somebody raise a praise on the call! Hey! Can you raise a shout right now on the call? Woo! My God! God is able to do just what it is. Help me look at somebody, tell him he's gonna my God. Hey. What do you say? He's able. Somebody go ahead and rejoice. What do you say? He's able. What do you say? Put those hands together and lift a shout of prayer. Say, God is God is able to do just what He says He will do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill His week. Never promise to you. Tell somebody, don't give up on God. Don't give up on Come on, let out a shout of praise. Take it up, my Come with me. Oh, 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 he's able. Let me hear you say. Oh, 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 he's able. Take it up. session. I'll be reading from John 7, verse 37 and 38. John 7, 37 and 38. He says, on that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of water. 
You know, we've been in the season of revival in this assembly, a season of awakening, a season for the manifestation of the almightiness of God. And the Bible says in Mark 2, 22, it says you cannot pour the new wine into an old wineskin. We're going to pray for the purging of the wineskin. I want us to commit ourselves before God this morning. This is the dispensation of the new wine in the covenant nation. God wants to manifest his almightiness. God wants to show that he is able. There has been that situation. You've been asking God questions. But God wants to show to us that he is able. I want us to say, he says, we will not pour the new wine into a, an old wineskin. He says, the problem has been the wineskin. He says, prepare the wineskin for me and I will show that I am able. I want us to ask this morning for a purging of our wineskin. He says, the preparation of the heart belongs to God. It is God that prepares the heart. Our heart is the wineskin. Father, cleanse us from every hindrance, everything that stops the new wine, everything that stops the manifestation or demonstration of your power in our wine wineskin. Remove the hindrance, every works of flesh, offense, any little fault. Make us all fit for the new wine. This is the time to demonstrate to the world that you are able. Father, cause the river. He says, and out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. We are in the season for the river to flow. But make us fit for the new wine. Father, we are ready for the new wine. We are ready to see your almightiness. We are ready, Father, to show to the world that we serve an able God. Our God is able. Our God is able. He says he is able. It is time for us to clean our wineskin so that God can flow the river of deliverance, that out of us can flow the river of miracles, the river of salvation. Masakara masete setu libro zikata ramo kesende bari mashanda raba zikati in krasoto raba satari bro zikapa me kote bari kasanda rama setu sekepo ri bro kita rama shitasa Father, make us whole. Make us whole for the new wine. He says, no man will pour the new wine into an old wineskin. But first, the wineskin is made fit. Father, make us fit for your purpose. Make us fit for the new wine. Purge our wineskin, Father. This is the season of revival. It is the season of awakening. A season of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. It is the season. Father, make us fit. Make us whole. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, every dispensation, every season comes with a revelation. You know, the Jews of those days, they missed the revelation of grace and truth. So they lost their portion in the dispensation of grace and truth. You know, Paul was saying in Ephesians 1.17, he says that God might grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that the heights of my understanding might be enlightened. He says concerning the sons of Issachar, say they understand the times. I want us to pray for an outpouring of the spirit of wisdom, that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened. Father, none of us shall miss this season of revival. Father, open forth our eyes. Let the veil be taken away. Let the veil be taken away. Father, cause us to enter into this new season, Father Lord. Father, we will not be spectators in the season of awakening. Covenant nation has entered into a new season of awakening, but we cannot afford to be spectators. He says those Jews of those days, because they missed the revelation of that season of grace, they lost their portion. Father, Lord, we will not lose our portion. Open forth the heights of our understanding. Grant us the revelation, Father, Lord, that prepares us for this season. The revelation comes for to prepare us for the season. He says it is God that works in us, both to will, and to do of his good pleasure. Holy Spirit, walk within us. Grant us an understanding of the season. Open the eyes of our understanding. Let the veil be taken away, Lord. Cause the veil to be taken away. Grant us an opening, insight into this new season that we have come into. Grant us divine insight. Ingrasu bari kasanda raboto seketesi rakashata ramasata rabazikapa mendo se kari basanda baro machetesi akasoto ri brasanda ramachetesi Father, open the veil. Let the veil be taken away. Cause the book to be opened. Let rivers flow from the rock. 
let rivers flow from the rock into every soul father lord let every dead thing come alive in the name of jesus cause the river to flow let the eyes of understanding be open open us to the revelations of the season father build us up father as lively stones spiritual houses for your power in this and this make us fit for your glory let your power be made known cause the river to flow once more make us carriers of your glory in this end days in jesus mighty name we pray i'll read isaiah 29 verse 18. he says in that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness i want us to ask that by the reason of the outpouring this morning that the eyes of the blind shall be open that the deaf shall hear the words of the book this morning father open my head to hear the words of the book Father, open the eyes of our understanding. Cause the hairs of the deaf to be open. To hear the words of the book, Father Lord. Show us the instructions, the right path. He says, you will hear a word behind you. Saying, this is the way to go. Open the hairs of your people. We thank you, faithful God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you, Father, for this season of outpouring. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Well, let's take our confession this morning. One to go. As I said to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto me, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me. This is the way to go, walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God, and I'm not distracted by anything or anyone. The word of God is food to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is wine to my heart, creating joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my contact with the scriptures using this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction encouragement, correction, and enablement to live out God's will. Amen. All right, uh, this morning I want to share, in the allotted time, I've been given on the subject of uh, the results of believing prayer, uh, the art or the practice of believing prayer, and the results that it brings into, uh, there's a slight echo please, all right the results that it brings into our lives. Uh, still on the broader theme of uh, fundamentals to having a revival in our midst as a church and looking at the practice of believing prayer. So I'll explain what I mean by that concept or by that phrase, believing prayer and uh, the results uh, that it will bring into our lives as we practice it. First of all, I'd like to establish, and we will see, that prayer is where the real action is. Everything that happens in the natural realm has its origin in the realm of the Spirit. And so prayer is where things are accomplished and then, oh sorry, the realm of the Spirit is where things are accomplished through prayer. And then when we carry out physical actions here, then we reap the benefits of the things that we have prayed into our lives. Psalm 104 and verse 28 tells us that. 104 verse 28, it tells us that, that thou givest them the God they gather, which means is what you have given, men can gather unto themselves. A man can receive nothing 
except heaven grants it. So that thou givest them, they gather. Thou openest thy hand, and they are filled with good. So in prayer, we get God to give. Then through our own actions, we now gather unto ourselves that which has been produced through praying. So prayer is where the true action is, but it must be believed in prayer, right? I'll explain that, followed by organized action or followed by properly organized action or intelligent action. Actions that are born out of information that has been given unto someone through the or as a result of your praying. In other words, prayer caused me to receive information from heaven as to how to go about what I want to do. Uh, and by that, I have intelligence now, or what you call insider information about the situation. I ask on the intelligence given to me by God, and then I get certain results in my life. Now, I'm about to make a startling statement. I haven't said that. Right? Now, it's not prayer that actually makes things work, that the act of just praying, but it is believing that actually makes things work. That is, believing prayer that makes things work. It's because the person believes. So it's not just the motion you go through in prayer, but the fact that you believe the inside your heart certain things you are praying about. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. So I can pray with my lips. I, people can, can all right, go into a certain body posture, kneeling down, shut their eyes. That's not what makes the prayer effective. It is believing with your heart. All right? Mary was told this, and blessed is she that believed, that believed, for there shall be a performance. Which means you want to see a performance, the workings of God. Blessed is she that believed, there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. Now, why will she see a performance? Because she believed. So, the performance there is only granted the outworking to those that believe inside their heart. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13, right, Paul said this about believing, for this cause we thank God without season, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh in you that believe. So it effectually works in the person that believes. The word effectual means works with power. So power is produced. Remember it tells us the exceeding greatness of his power towards us that believe. Towards us that believe the exceeding greatness of his power. So we are looking at believing prayer here. Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and then the functional thing is, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he saith shall come to pass, the person who is saying it, having believed, he shall have whatsoever he says. So two people can say the same thing. One person believes in their heart. And there's no way we're going to know just by saying it, whether you believe or you don't believe, it's a function of the heart. And it says, it's the person who believes in their heart that will have whatsoever they say. And then in verse 24, it goes into prayer, and then the functional word again is still, pray, is still believe. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. 
So there will be a performance of those things you are praying about because you believe while praying that it is yours. Now, so how does this believe mean? John 20 and verse 26, Jesus talked to Thomas about this. After eight days, he said to his disciples who were within, Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And verse 27, he said to Thomas, Reach hither my finger, behold my hands, put your finger and thrust it through my side. Be not faithless, but believing. And then he said, Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. And then Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed or empowered to prosper and get results. That's what blessed means. So when Abraham blessed Isaac, he empowered him to get those results. Blessed are they that have not seen yet believe. So the person that believes hasn't seen the results of their prayer, but they believe. In other words, as far as they are concerned, what they're praying about is done. So, believing is the functional word, and we want to take believing there into the place of prayer so that there's an outward performance of things. Now, but first of all, let me show this here. The, uh, Jesus gave to the church, not to any single individual, to his body, he gave them uh, his authority to act in his stead. In other words, when uh, people are going to act in the stead of Jesus and release the full authority of Jesus, all right, a church should be behind uh, that decree or that declaration, right, that, that decision, that pronouncement, when the faith of a people are behind it, then you're going to have maximum impact. So when he said to them, greater works than this shall you do, he was talking to a church, not just an individual. That, listen, as a body, you'll get through that body greater things that are done than what I did as an individual on this earth. If a body comes together, they will get greater things done. That's why when you read in the early church, they were very conscious about the ministry of the body. That's why Paul will say, I know they shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply, that the release of the authority of Jesus through his body. So the church as a body releases the authority of Jesus on this earth to influence the social sins and for the redemption of the souls of people through what is called believing prayer. In other words, the tool that God has given to the church to release that authority into the social scene, that is, people that might not be saved, kings, queens that might not be saved, can be influenced, all right, and come under the authority of Jesus, says the heart of the king is in the hands of God, and God influenced kings that were not even inclined towards him in their personal lives, when he wanted to get something done, all right, in his will, so the church can release that into society and then also release that authority for the redemption of souls and they are to do it through the art of believing prayer. Now, so when we talk about a church in believing prayer, right, and this goes to every single center, and that's what I'm teaching, and that's why we're establishing centers in community areas. Because those centers really are to be spiritual houses that release the authority and the power of God into their communities. So they first of all are a community and then they release the power and authority of God into the wider community to influence the social right, sin that is the culture of that community. And then at the same time for the redemption of souls of people within that community. And in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5, uh, it tells us, all right, that this is what it's all about. You also as lively stones. Now, stones 
are individuals, but you are built up or built together, fitly framed together, Paul said, into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up. And when they come together, it becomes the habitation place of God where God can manifest himself to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God. So each individual understands the importance of coming together and being part of, of a group there to offer up spiritual sacrifice unto God. All right? Because then when you are there, God is able to inhabit the praises, inhabit that, and manifest himself in his fullness. So the house is to come together, all right, to offer up believing prayer unto God, and then the results of such prayer is now reflected in the lives of each of those stones, that is, individuals. So the individuals go into their everyday endeavor, all right, manifesting, people seeing a divine distinction upon them, and that grace came into their lives as they came together to form a spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God. That is the pattern of God for the New Testament. That's what we saw in the early church. Prayer meetings, people came together, and when they prayed and offered up the sacrifices, then you now started seeing distinctions in the lives of individuals there. That's why it says, forsake not the gathering or the assembling of one another together. They were in one place, in one accord, very important. Now, but the results of this type of prayer, which means what happens in the life of every single individual. Now, this is the result of believing prayer. So, I will explain what that thing is, but believing prayer, we have shown that it works best when people come together in a spiritual house. That's why it says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The oil begins to pour forth, all right? So, there's a release of grace that is now all right, demonstrated in each person's life in their individual endeavor. Now, what is demonstrated in their life? The results of this type of prayer is that the hearts of people that were involved in it start getting flooded with strategies on how to get, quote and unquote, impossible things done. So what begins to happen is individuals now begin to have clarity of thought individuals begin to understand how to get things that they had considered impossible mountains that were before them, how to get these things done. All right? Which means they understand it. And when people say something is impossible, what they are simply saying is, it's not it's impossible. All things are possible to him that believes. But what they are saying is, I don't know how to get this done you are talking about. When people say, well, somebody says something. For example, the Wright brothers said, we are one day going to fly. People are saying, it's impossible, it's impossible. What they are simply saying is, we are ignorant of how you can fly. Not that it can't be done. You have to understand this. People are simply saying, I do not know how to get it done. When man said, we are going to the moon, they were saying, impossible. All right? Humanity has shown that they've defied things to tell us that all things really are possible. But the minute they understood and had the information on how to get that rocket up, all right, into space and land on the moon, and they put that to work, it no longer was impossible. So anything in your life that seems out of reach, right, is a function of the absence of knowledge on how to get it done. No dream is beyond you. All things are possible, but then you needed that information from heaven on how to get it done. And the result of believing prayer is that through it, all right, you make holes in the realm of the spirit where light now begins to enter into your heart. And, and that light now begins to shine forth. All right, within you. That's the result of it. That's why when we look at First Peter, I, mean, I didn't quote the scripture or another, but First Peter 2 and verse 9, it tells us, we'll see this, as that light enters, all right, but you're a chosen generation, we've shared this before, you move from being a holy priesthood now to a royal priesthood. The holy priesthood 
ministers to God, the royal priesthood demonstrates. All right? Priests to God, kings in this world. So people come out of that house where there was a holy priesthood, and then they go out in their individual lives, their royal priesthood. And it says a peculiar people. People see them to be peculiar, right? That show forth the praises. The word praises are the excellencies of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In other words, as you offered up your spiritual sacrifices, God rewarded you with what is called marvelous light. And by that light, you went and showed the excellency. In other words, your light was shining in darkness. Darkness could not comprehend it. So you started getting things done. It was given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. To those that are without, not part of the house, these things to them are done in parables. But to you, you have insight into the secrets of God's kingdom. And by that, you are able to get things done. So the result of believing prayer, major aspect of it, is wisdom floods the hearts of people. Psalm 18 and verse 34. One of the places where the church is missing it at large. It says, God says here, or Paul and David said, He teacheth my hands to war. In other words, I have been taught. He teacheth my hands to war. And because I have been taught so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Now, under natural circumstances, you can't break a bow of steel with your hands or your arms. But because that person has been taught by God on what to do, where to hold it, all right, the place of weakness, how to get it done, all right, right before the eyes of others, he holds something and everybody says it can't be done, but because he has been taught or she has been taught by God, bam, the bow of steel is broken. So you go out into your lives, into what you are doing, and you are breaking bows of steel, which means you are accomplishing things that are considered impossible with your hands because you have been taught. And we are saying that the results of this type of prayer is that you get taught by God. That individual gets information from heaven. That group are taught by God. That's how you get massive things done. Well, when I looked at Jesus, they said to Jesus, what, from whence do you have this wisdom that you are doing such mighty works? The works in his life were a function of the wisdom that was in his heart. It says, let your light so shine before men. How? That they might see your good works. In other words, it's the works that you are producing that show the light that is inside your heart. That they look at you and say, no man can do these things that you are doing except that person is taught by God. Results of believing prayer is that these strategies begin to enter into the heart, all right, of people. And I was talking during the week with Bishop David, I went to see him, and you know, I was talking, I told him we're opening centers, so he said, oh, come and see me, and he was sharing, and then he looked at me, and then he was saying something, and then he said, look, you know, we were hard, he said, when God told me to go and open 5,000 centers, you know, he said the largest we had ever done that year, never done in a year, the largest, was 500 centers. Then suddenly it says 5,000. You know, and it says, think about what we're saying here. You need 5,000 pastors. You need 5,000 assistant pastors. You need 5,000 places you are going to lease. You need 5,000 houses for staff or for the pastors. And it says, you know, you're going to areas 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, and all of that. And then, you know, he said something. So I asked him, I said, so how do you, trans because he said something in past, I said, oh, hold it, sir. How do you translate this to this, all right? And he said something that, I mean, shook me there. And he said, I mean, I don't know the exact words, but the essence of what he said was, prayer without a plan is just a waste of time, all right? In other words, when you pray and there's no plan, all right, each, and he broke down the steps easily to me on how they get it done. He says, We do this, we do this, then do this, then do this, and do this, and that's how we get the people. One and easy, all right, all right. So, it's you have that knowledge, and once you have that knowledge, then you can do it. But once people don't have access to that kind of information, all right, they don't have that knowledge. And we're saying, Believe in prayer leads to you accessing that. In other words, angels are released from heaven that assist you in finding that knowledge. The Holy Spirit is poured forth into your soul. He teaches you things. He shows you things. 
And so we have in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 21, this is the effect of believing prayer here. All right. Whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I'd seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me at the time of the evening oblation or the evening sacrifice when incense or what we call praise was being offered up. And he informed me. That's what the angel came to do. Give him information. And talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come to give thee skill and to give thee understanding. All right? I am come to give you skill. I am come to give you understanding. Uh, I heard a preacher. That, I, mean, I like the man, but what he was saying was, was, not, was not true. Neither was it scriptural. All right? I mean, he's a foreigner, but it wasn't scriptural. And I knew it came from the teaching on prosperity. In fact, inspired me that a series, I'll do a series shortly on health and finances because it's very important. But he was saying this, and I knew there's a skewed message on prosperity that, that literally entered into the body of Christ almost like a cancerous thing and turned people into lazy people waiting for the miraculous in it. And he made a statement. I told my wife what he's saying is not correct. He said that, you know, God never will meet your needs through your job. And he was saying that the way God meets needs, what he was saying was supernatural. He said, there's nothing like job this. And then he said that, you know, why do you work? You work so you may have to give. And so the understanding is you have to give. And then when you give, it is now given back unto you. And that's how your needs are met when somebody gives back to you. That's not what the scripture is saying. All right. The scripture says, Paul himself that you are quoting said, you know how, he said, brethren, you know how I've coveted no man's silver nor gold. He said, you know how these hands, all right, if you can find it in Acts, I think 20, 24, how these hands have ministered to my necessity. He said, these hands, it is through the work of these hands that my needs have been met. How these hands have ministered to my necessity. And then he says, and God has said, is more blessed. So, what God says is, he says, I will bless the work of your hands and you shall. You yourself know how these hands have ministered to my necessity and to them that were with me. These hands, he walked. All right. God said, I will bless the work of your hands. And based on what comes as a result of your work, it will be so productive that you will lend unto nations and not borrow. It's the work of your hands that produces it. That's why Paul taught, he that will not work, let that man not do what? Eat. Because it's from the work of your hand. But God says, I will bless it. How will he bless it? We'll see it. I will teach you how to work. And when you put your hands to the plow, I will give you information in answer to your prayers that is information nobody else on this earth knows. And based on that, there will be that peculiarity about you. There will be that divine distinction in what you are doing such that you will be producing just like Isaac. There was famine in the land and Isaac sowed. That scripture is not meant for financial giving. There are scriptures of financial giving. It is not that one. All right? Okay? It says he sowed. In other words, God taught him there was no rain. God says, I will show you how to get a bumper harvest here, all right, without rain falling. And he showed him certain things. And I believe he was the first person to understand irrigation. And he brought forth a hundredfold there. So let me show you a scripture. Isaiah 28 and verse 23, all right? It says, give ear and hear my voice. Now, this is what the results of believing prayer does. We won't show this. And hear my speech. Verse 24. Doth the plowman plow all day to sow? I haven't finished reading it now. All right? Does the plowman plow all day to sow? Doth he open and break the clods of his ground? Next verse. When he hath made plain the face thereof, that's level the ground, doth he ca not cast the, abroad the fishes and scatter the cumin and cast in the principal wheat and the appointed barley and the rye in their place? And then he goes on and says, for his God doth instruct him. Now this is a farmer who is farming. It says, God is instructing. So all this mechanized farming is God that taught humanity how to do it. We'll say this. God instructs him. And this is what you get from God that the way your hands on things and everything you do prospers because he's instructing you how to do it. And to instruct him to discretion and doth teach him. Verse 27. For fishes are not threshed 
with a threshing instrument, neither is a cart wheel turned about upon the cumin, but fishes are beaten out with a staff and the cumin with a rod. Verse 28, bread corn is bruised because he will not ever, not ever be threshing it, nor break it with the wheel of his cart, nor bruise it with his horsemen. Verse 29, he now says, this also comes from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. Now, let's put the Living Bible translation so it's clear and plain from verse 24 now. It says, Living Translation, Living Bible Translation. You have it now. Now, it says, listen to me as I plead. Does a farmer always plow and never sow? Is he forever harrowing the soil and never planting it? Next verse. It says, does he not finally plant in many kinds of grain. So he's leveling it, a time comes, he says, it's right to plant. Many kinds of grain, each in its section of the land. So he knows where to plant what. He knows just what to do, for God has made him see and understand. Next verse, it says that he doesn't thresh all the grains the same. That means discretion now. A sledge is never used on the deal, but is beaten with a stick. Now, all this information that you just see a farmer is God teaching, all right? A threshing wheel is never rolled on cumin, but is beaten softly with a flail. Then it goes on. Bread grain is easily crushed, so he doesn't keep pounding it. Now, last verse. It says, the Lord Almighty is a wonderful teacher and gives the farmer what? Wisdom. In other words, in what you are doing, God will give you wisdom. He will teach you. That's the marvelous light. He will give you light in what you are doing. So you bring out products and you bring out, you render services that people ask and they come and meet you, Rabbi. <laughs> Should I use this slang? Huh? They'll say, cut so for us. <laughs> in other words, they'll say, say what, 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 where in the world do you get this information from? Someone is shocked up as I say that. All right, where do you get this kind of information from? In other words, all right, the person who first used it, you see, let me introduce her. Oh, keep her this is for me. All right, so, you, you, you know, where did he get all this information from? They said they took knowledge that he had been with Jesus. That Jesus gave them that kind of information there. So it's about this information. Now, I'm going to play a video here, but I want to show something about the lion. All right, in this video, we don't show the actual, the lion pouncing on the prey so that we don't show blood. It won't be right. We were instructed by God as we were cutting the video. He said, don't show that part. <laughs> Not yet now. Ah, W2 Media, you are in a hurry. All right. Psalm 34, verse 9 to 11. Let me show something here. Psalm 34, 9 to 11. All right. Psalm 34, 9 to 11. Now, all fear the Lord, O ye his saints. There is no want or lack to them that fear him. Now, he tells us about the lion. Next verse. Young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good things. That means the lions, now hold this, go back there. It says the lions that hunger, that suffer lack and hunger, is because they didn't seek the Lord. He's using a lion and talking about seeking the Lord and a lion, which means even the animals, God is involved in them getting issues. All right, now let's prove that. Psalm 104 and verse 21. Psalm 104 and verse 21. The young lions roar after their prey. They seek their meat from God. So the lion, you see, going after its prey, the lion that catches the prey is the lion that listens to what God was telling it to do. How do we know? Verse 27. It says, Psalm 104 verse 27. These wait upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Verse 28. It says, thou givest them. So he gives them the weight so he can give them their meat in due season. So that meat the lion got, all right, came from that. that. That thou givest them, they gather. Thou openest thy hand and they are filled with good. So it's what God gave, you can gather. It's what God opens his hands and teaches you to do, you can get. And we're saying results of believing prayer. The problem is that the church has turned this prayer thing to magic. In other words, what they're saying is let us just won't do anything. We will just have power, all right? And God will do it for us. God says the first thing is I'm going to teach. We speak wisdom among them that are mature. He says maturity is wisdom. 
uh, Israel knew the acts of God. Moses knew the ways of God. So he gives wisdom to those that are close so that they know exactly what to do and they can get the job done in possible things. They understand how to do it, how to organize, all right, with the intelligence that has come as a result of prayer. And so somebody's in the office and says, well, for three, four people, they're Christians then. Uh, and they look at them and say, they say, well, there's a problem inside this office. I say, look, we'll go and pray about it. Now, this is why people despise prayer. When the people say, well, go and pray about it, we say, don't worry. They tell the boss, don't worry, we'll pray about it, we'll pray about it. Everybody's waiting for the answer. But they go and pray, they know it's about wisdom, which is what Daniel did. Give us some days. We will come back with the interpretation of this thing. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1, who is a wise man among you that knoweth the interpretation of a thing? That's what they said. We will come back with the interpretation. We'll answer this thing. Now, these three people go in the office and go and pray, and then they come back with the answer and say, Sir, we have prayed. And the results of the prayer is if we take these three steps, this is what will happen. Now, you don't have to risk things not knowing where, because you may not be sure. So let's do it this way, one, two, and they do it, and it works. Ah, the boss says it works. Now, whether it's of any faith, he says it works. Next time there's any issue inside that office, jokingly, he might be saying it jokingly, but he means it. Go and call those men of prayer. In fact, you might start calling them pastor. Call the pastors. Let them pray. It works again. He will call them because this thing is fetching more profit for the organization. He is the one that will say, it is now a rule in this office that we will start, commence our duty with prayer. Led by one of these three people because they have seen how prayer works. All right? But because what people are teaching in terms of theology is that, oh, we're going to pray. And it's almost like, oh, we're going to pray. And then people sit down and they're lazy in the office and say, we'll go and pray. Uh, God will do it for us. All right? But when we understand that this brings wisdom, and then we have what is called organized action. So let's look at the lions here. Let's play the video. Now, where is circled in red is where the lion is perched and hiding, taught on how to catch the animal. The lion, as strong as lion is, doesn't be, it's not visible, it's not visible until it's within and then it shows up, right? This now also happens. The lion, all right, is hidden there where the red is, blended, which means color blends with the environment, the vegetation, so it can't be seen, and then goes after, the lion goes after the smallest one, as strong as the lion is. The lion first didn't make itself visible and start walking and say, I'm the strongest. It won't catch anything. The lion stayed underneath and waited, and then when it went, it went for the least. I mean, I was saying in the first service here, it's just like somebody opening an eatery there, and then what does that person do? You know, announces it everywhere, then says where are eateries in, in, in this lucky area, goes to Admiralty where the big eateries are, people that operate in billions, and you start your own work and put yourself beside them and say, we'll see today, we'll see. Now, those ones, they can take a loss because they have centers all over Nigeria. You, your first center is beside them. They will say, we'll wait. How much is this selling pie? This amount, drop us, drop, drop, drop. And then they crush you in that place. But as someone said, the way to get results is if you have a tiny stone, if you throw it into emptiness, you will always get results. Which means if you throw something into emptiness, you will get results. The person with the e tree says, we have seen the big boys here. Where are those big boys not playing? That's what the lion is doing. Goes to an area. Many people are in this area. There are many places in Lagos, the e tree there. And says, many people are here with disposable income. It's not considered as a highbrow place. If you put the address, people will not know and all of that. And then goes and plants the hatred tree there. People start coming and are eating because they're happy. Now we are like those people in that area. So he gathers the money. Looks for another area like unto that. Plants. People gather. Looks for another area. Plants. People gather. Then when he has gathered 20 centers like that, making profit, for the sake of branding, he knows that. Just for branding. He comes to where everybody is to know that I'm a big boy now. Not because he's going to make money there, but we'll just break even in this place so that we are making money in some other places. So the people are taught by God. He tells you things. 
He even tells you the color of the building. He, I'm not saying that he says it in a spooky way, where you wake up and you say, blue, God, blue, the voice, blue, or you have book. No, you are going around reading, and suddenly you stumbled on a book that talked about colors, and you suddenly understood the real meaning of colors, and then you went in and, you know, began to arrange all right things. So wisdom begins to enter into the souls of people, and that begins to cause them to get, right, supernatural results. Now, bringing this to a close, let me just say this here. When a group of people, right, now what's a spiritual house? When a group of people define their goals and their objective, their target, how do people unite, all right? Unity is not based on whether we hold conversations together, Unity is not even based on the fact that we, have, we are in the members of the same family. Unity is not based on the fact that we are members of the same tribe. It's not members of that. Unity is not that we speak the same language. Unity comes when a group of people, no matter how diverse they are, are pursuing, all right, one common goal. Once there is one common goal, the people will be united. The tool they now use to pursue that common goal is that they are saying the same things. So, they are speaking the language of faith, they have a common goal, and what happens is they become unstoppable in prayer. Let me give this example. The time when Nigeria is always one, where you don't know any tribe or religion, it doesn't matter whose tribe or religion when Nigeria is playing football. There is no tribe. Nobody says this person is from this state that's called. They say Nigeria has scored. Okay? Every barriers are broken. You know why? Because you have a common... I was speaking to someone, and I said this country is not difficult. The problem is that people don't know it is not difficult. Somebody just has to get it right for 12 months. They will spark the energy. Nigerians are not difficult to lead. Okay? It's just that some people are just don't understand how this thing can be done here. Once you have a common goal, and you are all pursuing a common goal... All that difference begins to disappear. It's because there's no common goal. If you pursue a common goal, the difference disappears. Where there's a common goal and objective, the difference disappears. Let me give an example here. 1989, I went to watch Nigeria play against Cameroon. We wanted to qualify for World Cup 1990, which we didn't qualify. But we're watching Lib Adama Sigba Stadium. I thought it was Liberty Stadium there. And we're playing, and there was this lady beside me, male, made up. I didn't even think that kind of person would go and watch football. But she was there, she was alone, all made up and very, very, you know, you know like a babe and everything. Ah, I said, what's she doing football? Well, no problem. Well, we're watching the match. Next thing, Eti Messing got the ball. Stephen Keshi gave Eti Messing the ball. Pa, pa, pa. Eti Messing threw the ball in. Go! The way this lady jumped on me and grabbed me. Now, two minutes before that, if you touch her, she'll say, who are you? You are, what makes you touch me? All right? What, what, I mean, we, we look at it. What, what, you're, you're touching me. This, I mean, you're touching me. You can get a slap for it. This same person jumped. Now, both of us held ourselves. Then I realized this a lady I'm holding. I was trying to disentangle myself. But she was holding onto I said, my goodness. How when will I get away? Go! And I was jumping in her arms. Go! After that, she came back to herself. But at that point... There was no Jew or Greek, male nor female. Once you have a common objective and you hit that objective, every barrier goes down. All right? Everybody identifies with that and people say, right, here is the common goal and it. The principle is not football. The principle is that you have a common goal and objective. So a united people, all right, is now. It wasn't that we had conversations. I didn't know her from anywhere, but what brought that unity there was we had the same common goal, measurable objective, all right, something that could be clearly. Everybody knew winning was the ball going into that net. So we see this in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 1 to 6. It tells us in Genesis, the whole earth was of one language and one speech. God did not say they were one. The humanity had been saying the same language from the beginning until something happened. Verse 2. It says this, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, all right, and they dwelt there. And then they said to one another, go let us make brick, let us burn them thoroughly, a brick for stone, slime they had for mortar, and verse 4, and they said, go to, let us build now, they set the goal. 
a city and a tower whose top reached to heaven. It was measurable. Let us make a name that will not be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see what the city and the tower, their objective, which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, which means see, the people is one. In other words, they have common goal. He said they are now one. And they have just one language. And all this that they begin to do, and nothing will be restrained from them that they have imagined to do. So the goal is defined, and then you get into believing prayer to get it done. Believing prayer is persistent praying. All right, knowing that the answer is certain. One of the, one of the, just this morning said, look, one of the most important things about praying is consistency. That's why I said, this person didn't, didn't know God, feared not man, feared not God, regard no man, but because of that continual coming, that that persistency, day and night, you are pushing on it, that that momentum is one of the most powerful reasons why people break through through prayer. Believing prayer is persistent in prayer, knowing that the answer is certain, it is prayer that depends on praise to get results. Now, it also means that in this prayer journey, we do understand we are going to have setbacks. In other words, when you are on a faith journey for something, there will be setbacks. All right? Setbacks don't mean that. It is not going to happen. It just means that, and it's, except you don't yield to it this way. And that's why we thank God for the setbacks. And we praise God. Because any time you come into rhythm with God, all right, you are going to do impossible things. But God has to get you in rhythm with him. So those setbacks are simply God telling you there's still to be some adjustment in your soul. You are not yet in perfect alignment. The vision is there, but the knowledge to get it done is not there completely. So anytime you have a setback, we thank God and we praise God. All right? It's only people that don't understand faith, the journey of faith, that get discouraged by setbacks. Okay? That, that get angry and depressed by setbacks. Setbacks are part of it. If you're going to lead or build anything, you ask any entrepreneur, anybody who's building anything, there will be setbacks. All right? When we're opening up centers, I told the people, I said, listen to me, I've told even my staff there, there will be setbacks. You are going into these places, everything is set. You have everything, the project, everything is set. You, everything looks set on paper when you get to the place and the rubber hits the road. That is why you must be there one hour before the time because anything can happen. You can set things up the night before, get there in the morning, a rat has run over the wire, that is the end. You put it on, the thing is behaving like it wasn't what was put on. It is part of life. All right? I mean, someone wrote for me in one of the churches and said, oh, the, 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 the screen was because um, the, the wires were hot and all of that. I, I, and it was really, you know, uh, the wire, I said, wire hot? You didn't know why? I mean, it happens. All right? If you are at a church, the only time a pastor has a holiday is not if you travel from Monday to Friday and come to church on Sunday, you are, you are not on holiday. The only time you have holiday, you can even be in your house. So long as on Sunday you are not doing, you are asleep. That's the holiday in your house. Because that's where the work is. Because you are carrying things. I remember first time I didn't come to church on a Sunday. I went to South Africa. I went to Pastor in Macaulay's church. They were playing music. Something happened to an equipment. It didn't concern me. I, I, my, I was free. I was just dancing. That's your problem. Your equipment... You know, for the first time I was in a service and I was just dancing. They said the equipment went, that's your problem. I was still singing the song. I was in trouble. No stress. All right? But you call me, you start a church, you put on generator, it sounds somehow when you put it on. Throughout the message, you are listening to the generator as you're preaching. All right? The light flickers. Say, man, this is this generator here. Man, this is generator. And then you hear a sound. And then what that sound means is round up, round up, round up, round up. <laughs> All right? So you understand this? That listen, things will happen. But to be a part of God's economy, all right, is how you handle when things happen. Right? How you handle it. Hebrews 3, 5 and 6, it tells us that. And this house we're talking about. Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for those things that were to be spoken of after. It says, but Christ as a son over his house, whose house we are on this condition that we hold fast the confidence 
and the rejoicing of hope firm unto the end. And it says today, if you will hear what the Holy Ghost is telling you, it says do not harden your heart when you get to times of provocation. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying today. He's saying every day you get into a time of provocation, a time of testing. Please do not harden your heart. Read Psalm 95. That's where he got it from. He says, worship me during that time. Bow before me. Open up your heart. Don't develop any resentment because I am up to something, which means I want to do something massive in your life. Let me tell you this story, all right? Let me digress here. I, was, I don't know, I stumbled on it. There was this barber who used to cut here. He's a Nigerian. and was talking about how he traveled to Europe and suffered. Eventually got to one of these Eastern European companies, uh, countries and he was cutting here. He didn't know how to cut, but finally he got the hang of it. So one of these Nigerian stars went to sing in that country. So the chap head, there was a Nigerian who cut hair and went there. And he cut the guy's hair. Now he said that while he was cutting his hair, the guy just said to him, why don't you cut this number on my hair? And he cut the number. And that was it. Next thing, he just saw blogs all over. That when this Nigerian star went to this country, he was initiated into a cult. And that the Baba, they put his name and the address of his something. He was the one who caught the thing and initiated him into this cult. He said, what is going on here? He was looking at the blogs all over the whole place. Me initiate people. What cult? What is going on? And he said he was so depressed. He did not know shortly after that his name and the address of his barbering shop was all over the world. People started calling from Kenya. Since you cut this stars here, can you come? We have a concert and cut your hair. He said he went global by that. Crisis will expand you. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Listen to me. Don't think that things are going wrong. It will expand you. It will blow you up. Right? Rejoice when you find it there. Do not harden your heart as in the day of provocation in the wilderness there. Don't harden your heart. Rejoice. And this is what believing prayer is all about. Confidence and rejoicing in the hope farm unto the end. Where do we get that confidence from? 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, we have those things that we have desired of him. All right, so that's the confidence. I have prayed about it. The Father has heard me. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to work the way I think it will work, but it's eventually going to work out. Now I'm rejoicing. I put rejoicing with that confidence that's believing prayer. First Peter chapter 1 and 4, and I close with this. First Peter 1, 4. It says, we have been born again unto an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, and you are kept by the power of God unto this salvation, ready to be revealed in this last time. Now it says, wherein you greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness. Through manifold temptations, you are still rejoicing that something is on its way. That the trial of your faith, being more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried, may be found unto praise and honor at the appearing of Jesus. Though you see him not, which means whom have not seen. Don't be like Thomas who says, if I don't see it, I won't believe. You love. In whom though now you see him not. Yet believing, you treat it as real. And because of that, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. Believing prayer is the prayer that is offered up with joy unspeakable, full of glory. When things seem to be going wrong, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. You worship God. That is believing prayer. It goes on and says this, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation, not the manifestation on the outside, but the salvation of your own souls. What does that mean? This salvation, the prophets inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come to you, uh, searching what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which on them did signify. When he testified before hands of the sufferings of Christ, the glory that should follow, it says it was revealed. That not unto themselves, but unto us, that they minister these things reported by them who have preached the gospel, which things the angels desire to look into. In other words, Peter is saying here, you will begin when you pass that test and you are rejoicing. That's the test. The test for the revelation is you rejoiced in when things seemingly were going wrong. You worshipped God and said, God, you are faithful. Moses said, God is faithful. 
Jesus said the Father is faithful. You also in that situation say, God, you are faithful. You rejoice with joy unspeakable, worshiping him. And because of that, you receive the end of your salvation, the end of your faith, the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Because as your soul goes, so your life goes. And your soul is now exposed as a reward for that. So information that even angels desire to see. So you start seeing things that nobody else can see. And based on that salvation that has happened to your soul, you look at it and say, we're going to get this thing done now. It's easy. We'll do this and do this and do that. All right? Obvious stuff that nobody else is seeing. And you go and execute it and get it done. So believe in prayer. It's prayer that is offered up by an individual who knows we are going to go through tests, but when we get to this place, we are going to worship our way through the crisis. We are going to praise God that we got crisis. We are going to thank him that is a readjustment that has been made here, and we're going to be full of joy. We aren't going to have mood swings, and we're not going to be discouraged about it. This is, as they say, the business that we have chosen. This is the business of faith. That is the path that you are going to walk. All right, they are going to walk through that path. There are temporal setbacks. There are things that happen, but you're going to worship your way through it, and you're going to learn things, taking the education of the journey that you never knew were in existence. Your eyes are going to go. And my friend, let me tell you, when I finished talking, Bishop, I told somebody, I said, I said to the person, I said, this man knows things, right? What I didn't think he would know, he knows things. He just knows things. Right? Which means because you are pursuing a dream, your soul is exposed to that information and you get it done. It starts with a dream. It starts with that goal. If you don't decide to build a tower, you will never know how to build a tower. If you don't decide you are going here, you will never find out how to do it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. Whatever they are going through at this point in time, strengthen them within. Grant them the grace to be able to worship you during that time offer up spiritual sacrifice unto you, enter into the marvelous light that you have ordained for them in the mighty name of Jesus, such that results pour forth in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Um, what media? Can we have a confession after the word? Confession after the word. Is that? Okay. Okay, so let's go. One, two. I declare this week, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Every day I open my mouth wide, declaring the things I believe, calling into existence those things I see with my inner eyes, as though they are. And God in return daily loads my life with benefits, advancing my position. Morning by morning, he opens my ear to hear his voice and has positioned me by his instructions such that others call me fortunate, lucky and blessed by what has occurred every day. I declare wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, I have gotten wisdom and with her understanding. I call wisdom my sister and understanding my closest friend. I have exalted wisdom, and she has promoted me, making my life glorious. She has brought me to the place of honor because I have embraced her. I have listened to her and received her sayings. And so, by the decisions I make, years are added every day to my life. God has taught me in the way of wisdom. He has led me in right paths. When I go out this week, my steps do not end in dark, narrow passages, nor do I waste time making wrong turns. Amen. Amen. 
And one phrase, one of the pastors said many things this morning, but one thing that resonated with me is this phrase that we do not have mood swings. When those events happen, we do not have mood swings. It's a choice. We choose that we're not going to have mood swings. When Jesus was saying men ought always to pray and not to faint, it's a choice. You know, and that really resonated with me that I'm making a choice that regardless of the environment, regardless of the things that I see, I choose not to have mood swings. What do I choose to do? Pastor taught us, I choose to worship my way through. Amen. Thank God for his word. Okay, so we're all welcome. I'm sure we have all been refreshed by the word of God. Would like to welcome some very special people in our midst this morning. So, who are they? If you are worshiping with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning here at the Covenant Nation Lekki Chapel, you are very welcome. Please rise to your feet. We'd like to welcome you. Please rise to your feet wherever you are seated. You are welcome. On behalf of our senior pastor whom you just heard preach the word, we welcome you very warmly. You are welcome. The ushers are going around. They will give you our welcome packs. Please feel the um, sleep inside the pack and return to the ushers. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, let's prepare our offerings and our tithes. Um, and then let us just say a word over them. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the ability to give to you. Lord, there is nothing that we have that you have not given. You are the one who has given us bread to eat, and you have also given us seed to sow. Lord, we are grateful. With a grateful heart, we bring this token. It is not that you need it. It is that we have come to give it to you in appreciation. Lord, we ask that you receive it from our hands. Lord, that you find these gifts these tokens acceptable. And Father, that we continue to experience your power in everything that concerns us, even as you give us more seed to sow and more bread to eat. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's take the announcement. So the ushers, please go around with the bags, you know, and the collector while we listen to the announcements. Welcome to church. Here are the announcements. We would like to welcome all our special guests, that is, all those worshipping with us for the first time. We are delighted to have you join us. We believe you have been blessed and we hope you will be joining us again. Please take a moment to fill the card handed out to you and return to any of the ushers on your way out. If you are joining us online, kindly visit our online first-timers page via www.insightsforliving.org forward slash new to church. We would love to connect with you. Be Women presents a prophetic worship encounter, theme, Daddy and His Daughters. This is a meeting for all women seeking to press into the heart of Abba Father. Date is Sunday 30th May 2021. Time 4 p.m. Venue on site and online. On site, The Covenant's Place, Igomu. Online, live on YouTube and Facebook, The Covenant Nation. Special guest, Minister Victoria Orenze, powered by The Covenant Nation. If you would like to get the audio CD of the message you just listened to or previous messages taught by Pastor Kwoju Oyemade at the Covenant Nation, kindly call or send a WhatsApp message to the media office on 0814-000-0224 or visit www.insightsforliving.org forward slash CD hyphen orders to place an order. Audio CDs are produced on an order basis only. Also, MP3 formats are available for purchase at www.elibrary.insightsforliving.org. Kindly drop your offering in the designated bags at your center. The ushers will assist with this and note the church account details displayed on the screen for online transfers or visit www.insightsforliving.org forward slash giving.
remember to send your feedback to respond at covenantchristiancenter.org because at the Covenant Nation, we love feedback. Let us remain careful and responsible following all safety guidelines as recommended by the NCDC. For more information about upcoming Covenant Nation events, kindly visit the church website at www.insightsforliving.org or connect with us on all our social media handles at Covenant Sea Center and at Pastor Poju on Instagram and Twitter. God bless you and have a fulfilled week.